Hey everybody, it's Shadowstar and Crystal here for another review of Legends of Tomorrow. And we're starting season two. Oh, now we got Oliver and a new guy and people are back and it's awesome. There is so much in this episode. So if you thought, oh, I don't know, season one was kind of all right. This episode proves to you that season two is going to be great. In one episode, this episode proves, yeah, don't worry, season two is going to be good. Oh, yeah. All right, but let's start it to start. Let's not, let's start it to start with our brand new character, Nate Haywood, who, yeah, we already got a brand new legend and he's already way better than the horse. Okay, okay. My question is, how can Nate notice changes in history Shouldn't he remember those changes as always being there? Well, I don't think he's noticing the changes. He's noticing things that don't quite match up. Like things that most people would look over. No, most people are going to overlook those tiny things. But, I don't know, the history books have a guy who looks exactly like Ray Palmer. Then there's another thing that mentions a flying time ship, you know. Most people would gloss over those things and say, oh, what do they talk about? But then Nate starts to think, hmm, this kind of matches up. He's not noticing, he doesn't remember the differences. He's just noticing the odd points. Just like he's able to say, huh, why is there reports of a bomb, even though we're, we're being told that the bomb was invented in 1945? Yeah, why were they told it was invented in 1945 if it was there earlier. I don't know, because history is written by the winners, because most people didn't really have recorded documentation of that. I mean, it seems like it's an atomic explosion, but nobody really saw it except a few Nazis who threw a bomb at an underwater ship, which wouldn't have actually been witnessed. Okay. It's not something that would have had huge documentation and photo evidence. Okay. It just seems like an atomic bomb and mo would have had no real explanation. So, yeah, it's not that he's noticing the changes as if he remembers a different timeline. Okay, okay. But, yeah, we've got Nate, our brand new legend, and obviously, yeah, he's already way more fun and interesting than any of the Hawks. Like I said, this season, not to say season one was bad by any means, but this season already shows you we're just having more fun. Yeah. It's still a good, it's still exciting, and it's still going to have its serious moments. But it just feels more fun. Oh, yeah, the team is so fun together. The team is so fun. Obviously, Oliver gets to make an obligatory cameo in this episode, just for the fun of it. Yeah, like we started off with a random mission to show us what a regular oh, mission Oh, God, that is. scene is amazing. That scene is exactly what you need in an opening episode of a season. It says, yes, we're back in action. Legends is back, and aren't they awesome? That's exactly what the scene is, and of course I have to compliment the soundtrack. Oh, one of the best music pieces now in Legends. Now that Legends is back, I get to compliment the costume people. I mean, you could have complimented it in the other shows, but I mean... But Sarah I... looks great in everything. True, but the music, it's one of Legends' both best soundtrack pieces. I believe that actual soundtrack piece that plays when they're fighting in France is called Swashbuckling Through Time. It's kind of a new theme a little bit. And it's, oh, that scene. It's glorious. I, ha I love Jax's moment where he jumps off the roof and catches him. Yeah. Just so much. Like I said, it just says, you miss Legends? Well, they're back, baby. Yeah. Yeah, Legends is full of fun fight scenes, chaos, and that's what it is. Because like I say, I mean, we've had a bit of a break since we last saw Legends, which is great because you get that feeling like you would have had of if you watch this the first time. You know, it's been probably three or four months since season one ended. You've been excited. You're waiting for Legends. And then you see this episode and you would have been on the edge of your seat the whole time. Imagine waiting for this episode to air and it's the first time you've ever seen it. It's brand new. Mm. That would have been amazing. Oh, yeah. So, obviously, we get Mick telling the story of what happened and all that Even stuff. Even though he tells us about scenes he wasn't there for. True. And it, and it's not just the audience's perspective, because, you know, Nate reacts to something that just happened in that scene as if Mick had said it, even though he wouldn't. And it makes sense if, if Gideon told them what happened, but Gideon doesn't function until about halfway through the episode. Yeah. Oh, well, what are you going to do? But it's still fun. Oh, well. But yeah, obviously, speaking to Sarah, we still got the stuff from last season of Legends and Arrow with what happened with Laurel, and... Okay, i got a question about that. So Sarah's following Damien because she is convinced that if she kills Damien now, 
then he won't be there in the present day to kill Laurel. Isn't that kind of like saying if Eddie shoots himself, then his um, descendant won't be there to kill Barry's mum? But when Eddie shoots himself, Barry's mum doesn't come back to life. Well, the way I see it is, one, no, because one, when Eddie shoots himself, he's in the present. There's no such thing as present. No, if somehow Barry had gone back in time and, like, killed young Eddie, then came back, he'd be in a new timeline. You don't feel... Eddie is still dying before he can have a child. You don't feel the timeline changes around you. If you popped back out of the timeline, then back into it, it's sort of like in Back to the Future, where Marty and Doc will not feel the changes of Biff's messing up the timeline until they try and travel a second time. When they're already in the future, they don't feel the timeline change around them. But once they time travel, they pop into a new timeline. Yeah, so, that is weird. So, you know, when Eddie shoots himself, it's in the present, so they're not going to feel the changes around them. But it still doesn't explain other things. Although you could also argue that Eddie, that both Eddie and all the stuff surrounding, like, Eobard Thorne and, his, and Barry's mother's death are the results of time travel. Whereas here... Damien Dark isn't a time traveler. He's living his normal linear life. It's more like killing Damien is similar to saying if we kill young Savage, then Rip's family would survive, which was the sound plan. And slight spoiler, Legends will prove that its version of time travel shows that you can change somebody's past and make somebody come back to life by doing things. So there's also ideas of the fact that there's different methods of time travel, speed force time travel, and temporal zone, and perhaps they have different rules on how they affect the timeline. That's annoying. It's annoying, but it's a, because it's a different method, it's also a convenient way to explain why, obviously, you know, the Flash writers and the Legends writers don't quite have different, don't quite have the same views on how they handle time travel, so you can at least say... In universe, you can say speed force and temporal zone time travel has different ways of working. Speaking of speed force, look who we've got. So, all right, we'll skip ahead of back. So, if you were just excited to say, hey, Damien Dark is here, we don't just have Damien Dark, <laughs> we have Eobard Thorne, played by Match Letcher. So, we have not one, but two villains. I mean, you know, as we said, we want a villain who's better than and savage. You got two of them. <laughs> we took two of your favourite villains. I know people have issues with season four of Arrow, but Damien Dark is amazing. And and everyone loves a reverse Flash. And like I said, I love reverse Flash played by Matt Letcher. And thank God for Legends season two. Oh boy, what a cliffhanger to end on. Like, we're all, I'm excited because I love him. But like I said, that's a holy shit moment. You think, okay, Damien Dark, that makes sense. Whatever, we're going to deal with the Sarah stuff. Yeah. Then boom! Reverse Flash shows up. Put yourself in the perspective of somebody who's never seen it. That's a big one. Yeah. Oh, boy. Another big thing, especially for comic fans, is the JSA. That's another cliffhanger. Of course, it was mentioned before because we got the name Rex Tyler before. Yeah, last season Rex Tyler showed up and said he's a member of the JSA. And they kind of talk about it and then we obviously... But now here they are. Now here they are as well. Because we are in the year that we were told not to go to. True, but it all worked out in the end, but obviously we'll see what happens next time with the whole JSA stuff. Let's, that, whatever, that's just an exciting cliffhanger. But, you know, also, here's another wrinkle. So, you know how I said in, um, you know how I said in Flash Season 3 how you were complaining how does Barry's Flashpoint make all these odd changes? Hmm. Well, it's not just Earbud Thorn time travelling. There's time pirates. We clearly see people could time travel, not just Legend, but clearly other people do have time tr- methods of time travel. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know, a time, par- r- time pirate ran over Dante. Look, it's a ripple effect. That's a beautiful yes, thing. You don't even need a flashpoint. You could just say if something gets inconsistent, a uh, time pirate did it. Yes, but if a time pirate did it, then Cisco and Barry and everyone wouldn't remember any different, right? Well, a time pirate did it, but we don't know how they did it. All the, all we, what if a time pirate just drove a car and killed Dante? They didn't mean to, he just happened to be there. Cisco remembers, oh shit, some guy ran over my brother. 
Yeah. Wouldn't you, what do you mean they wouldn't remember him for any different? Cisco but does... Barry remembers Dante not being dead. Because he comes from a different timeline. Look, time travel is weird. But it, well, also, when you're a time traveler, you're immune to effects. Just like, spoiler alert, the legends are going to remember pre-Flashpoint. Ah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, even if you're not the direct cause... If you're outside the timeline, you will be immune to the changes. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they haven't been to 2016 in a while. So, yeah. of course, they're going to remember baby Sarah and anything else that's changed. Yeah, so, yeah. But, obviously, one nitpick I have with this episode, and don't get me wrong, it's not a problem with the episode per se, is the episode hinges on the fact of saying that how vital Einstein is. Now, I'm not a huge historian, but Einstein only played a very small part in the creation of the nuclear weapons. And, you know, he was a very he had a very minor role in the Manhattan Project. There were may, way more people like Wasn't Feynman. Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer and Feynman had bigger roles than Einstein. And then they say, oh, it's not even Einstein, it's his wife who we've never heard of. Yeah, when I Don't researched the Don't atomic bomb, Legends... the main name I heard was Oppenheimer. Yeah, whatever. But that's the thing, though. Legends has never been about hit- historical accuracy. So what? Although that's one thing I love about Nate, is because he is a historian, he doesn't really do it too much now, but he kind of brings a, not a fourth wall breaking, but, you know, there's episodes where... If things are inaccurate with history, Nate actually pops up and says, oh, this isn't right, but we just run with it. It's almost like Nate speaking for the audience saying, saying, oh, this is wrong, but we'll just run with it anyway. Mm. I don't know. I kind of like that. It's like, eh, we're going to be wrong, but if you point it out, it's a bit funny. Yeah. But, yeah. But, man, there's a lot of action in this episode. you got the action scene when they're in the French house. you got the action scene where they're fighting the Nazis. you got Sarah versus Damien Dark. There's so much stuff. And, you know, it's so great that they continue it. I mean, obviously you knew Sarah would probably still be grieving. But the fact that, you know, we're going to have suddenly have Damien Dark. And they don't even make a big fuss about it. He just walks in. It's like, oh, I guess Damien Dark's part of the season. Even though... Um, it was mentioned at one point that it's been six months, and yet she hasn't gotten over it. Oh, well. It's been how many months for, uh, Quinton? And he hasn't gotten over Laurel either. Mm. Oh, well, and, and she's got a time machine, so... And how long had it been for Rip Hunter? True. <laughs> we spent a whole season worrying about his problems, and we don't know how much time it was taking. And I love... If she knew where to find him... Well, if she was really wanted to save Laurel, she could get in the jump ship and try and find baby Damien when he's easy to kill. Well, there would be no way of finding him. He was born hundreds of years ago. How are you going to know when he is? Mm. It's like saying, why don't we go find baby Vandal Savage? <laughs> but, oh, well. And then, you know, after all that, then we're back, at, then we're back with Nate and we've got to go find the team because Rip time scatters him. So then we get all the fun sequence of finding the team again, putting the team back together. And it's just seeing, fun seeing the team get back together, seeing the team be a team. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, like I said, last season we got rid of the worst aspect, which was the Hawks, and now the team just feels neat. It just fits, you know, this... I guess they somehow managed to program the time scatter to keep Jackson Stein together. I guess, well, I mean, they programmed it, so they probably knew to do it. I don't know how, how, but maybe they knew we have to make sure these people scatter together. Although, if it's by that logic, why couldn't they scatter them all together? Yeah, exactly. I don't know, but at least it's smart enough to keep them together. Otherwise, they would have been screwed, but... Hmm. Oh, well. We also don't know how long... They were in the past anyway, because Jax's phone was still working. And in my experience, my phone would be lucky to last 48 hours, even if I was trying my best not to use it. Still, they wouldn't last. And he asked the kid, do you want to look in it again? I know. know. You would be barely using your phone, if ever. My only theory is that maybe they were somehow using their Firestorm powers to power the battery with nuclear power. I don't know. (laughs) Can you do that? Well, look, I don't know how Firestorm works. It's still, it's still a good episode. Like a lot oh, of hell yeah. Like, like I said, every tiny thing I've said is just a tiny nitpick because you still have to find nitpicks where you can, like you know, the Einstein stuff and things like that. But all in all, man, is Legends good? I mean, don't get me wrong, I love season one, but season two and three are the best. I love season two so much; it's what made me fall in love with this damn show. We'll get into that soon, but oh. you know. 
We've got great fight scenes. We've got not one, but two of the best villains in the Arrowverse. We've got the team just being a great team. We've got a new team member who's also great. We've got so many good scenes. I'm giving this a 9. Yeah, yeah, I will go 8.5. Yeah, I'm giving this I a... I love it. It's really good, and for a season opener, what a good season opener. Oh, hell yeah. First, this is what you need in the season opener. You want it to get you right into the action. You want me to say, oh, yeah, I've missed this. And yeah. Definitely. So, what's the next episode called? The Justice Society of America. Well, we already know what we're dealing with. We saw the cliffhanger, but obviously we'll worry about that soon. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you next time for more Legends and other things as well. See, see you, you next time, time guys. guys.